What's the haps, folks? This is Professor App here with a let's play of Pentiment. Last time we continued our lives in Europe and we spent a bit more time investigating Baron Rothvogel's murder. So after we uh, went, after we spent the night in searching the library, I woke up in the morning or rather the afternoon and went over to um, the priory and found um, and found Prior Ferenc cipher, which led us to the grave. And while I was there, I decided to get um, Otto Zimmerman to help me out to digging the graves, trying to see what uh, Prior Ferenc had hidden there. While we were doing that, we discovered that um, the Prior Ferenc had hidden some like occult tools, like here, a strange occult rod and a plate and a knife as well. So he was hiding in there for, um, and the, the notes that he left behind in the cipher was meant to be like as like a way to tell like any other occult enthusiasts where um, where he'd hidden them essentially. So yeah, it's, it's uh, it may be that Sir Prior Ferenc was the one who uh, killed Baron Rothvogel, but I'm not entirely sure. And I wasn't really able to do much more investigating because of my time in the library, I because I overslept. And so as after digging up the other grave with Otto, I had to go and find. Yeah, you know, basically then it was the end of the day, and I went to go and find someone to eat with. And I met up with them um, with Brother Sabat, who told us a load of stories about them from the Bible, along with all of the other like uh, women in the town and their children. And told them all stories about you know what they were doing, and uh, also a like, nice conversation about bread as well, which was uh, quite fun. I didn't, really, I didn't think I'd have such a long conversation about different types of bread in this game. And then after I uh, finished having my meal with Brother Sabat, I went back home to uh, go and get some sleep. And I saw uh, the brother. I can't remember. Yeah, he had a strange name. I can't remember it. But uh, he told me that, uh, the, that the Baron, that the Archdeacon, was here, and he was arrived early to conduct his investigation into, uh, into the Baron's murder. He also gave me a warning to say, don't talk about the other sisters at the Abbey if you do know anything about them. I guess that makes sense because you don't want I don't want to indict them as being a possible suspect in the Baron's murder. And if I'm being honest, I really don't feel prepared at the moment to see say who actually killed him. I mean, maybe that's not exactly what you know the the goal of this is not to say who could have killed him, but like you know possibly like get cast you know enough doubt on Piero's uh, on Piero's guilt to like sway the Archdeacon and so there might be possible other, other possible suspects. And I'm wondering if I can get this wrong, and then maybe if I, my actions could end up with leading to a brother Piero being, you know, executed or, you know, arrested for the Baron's murder. Because, I mean, it definitely seems like Father Gernot is probably wanting to get this sorted out as quickly as possible. And I'm, I'm guessing he would be willing to sacrifice brother Piero to do that. But, um, yeah, it's, it is interesting, because I'm, I'm going to see, I'm really interested to see what's going to happen here. Whether, you know, whether I can actually, uh, I can actually uh, sway the Archdeacon's opinion. I also wonder if I've got, because I have got a bit of time before I can speak to the Archdeacon, because he's not speaking to me until the afternoon or after lunch, so I wonder if there's anything else I can do in the meantime before then. But I suppose that's something we'll find out soon enough, so why don't we get started and see what happens in Pentiment. So I've uh, just woken up. Time to get back to work. So I've just woken up after my dream about uh, where Dr Andreas had a dream about uh, going back to see his parents and also the woman he's meant to marry, and also speaking to those uh, strange people. Who um, again, I'm not entirely sure whether they are like real people he's met or whether they're like characters that uh, Andreas invented for him to talk to when he's in trouble. But um, maybe I'll find out about them eventually. Okay, let me just uh, quickly check the map. Yeah, it looks, it looks like I've still got a possibility, you know, to investigate, because you can see I've still got, I think that's Lucky on the top there, and then there's Johann Bauer's farm, so I can still do those if I wanted to. Um, right, let's head off then. Let's see if uh, Clara has anything to say. Oh, we see you, the, see you the spinning bee. We see you the spinning bee, Andreas. Yeah, so I can still go, can't I? So let's, let's head out. Before I do, let's just quickly see if there's anything else I can inter I can do before doing that. There's Andres. Is he all right? Hello, Andres. Wonder if the bakers have anything to say now that uh, I've eaten with uh, Brother Sabat. Yeah, that's all Rick, isn't it? Yep. God bless you, Andres. No, I guess not. Does Gretz have anything to say? Hello, Andreas. No, nothing about the looks of things. Okay, let's go and see a Johann Bauer then. Let's do this as spinning bee, see if we can find any more information. 
Yeah, here he is. Andreas, I was just wondering where you'd turn up. The gaggle sort of said you'd come to watch them spin. Between you and me, hey, you knock about, it's a knock up, not, hey, he's not about to let you go once he's got you in her claws. So I hope you've got a few hours to hunker down and get comfortable. I'm happy to spare a few hours. And you'll be glad to hear it. She's got a fondness for you, heaven knows why. Now, I can't let you inside among the unmarried girls, being being no, new married, just unmarried yourself. But you're welcome to watch the, through one of the windows. I understand. That idiot never did see trouble. He didn't want to, to jump in feet first. Oh look, I've just seen myself on the wind by the window there. I see. You don't think he's gone to Innsbruck? Who are we talking about? We we're discussing my cousin Martin. Ah, yes, Martin. I, wonder, I was wondering what was happened to him. Even though my mum says we're not supposed to. It's different when I do it. Veronica, don't argue with your mother. That's not fair. And no back talk. You'll just keep listening. Sorry, Dad. Anyway, I doubt Martin's gone to Innsbruck. That small time to that small that small time's a little shit now. You think he has something more exciting in mind? It's a big world. Perhaps he intends to explore it. Or escape. That nobleman was just murdered up at the Abbey. Martin picked up an awfully convenient time to run off. Yeah, because he, he stole some, something from him. Oh, Lord. Andreas was friends with the nobleman. Do you think Martin could have... You know... I'm not ruling anyone out just yet. It just doesn't seem like Martin. Martin might be a thief, but I don't think he's a murderer. He's a coward at heart. I think it takes a brave man to commit a murder. Not a brave man, but a bold one. And Martin is and Martin is not that. He's your he's, he's your problem, cat. What do you think? Could he have killed that man? She thinks maybe. <laughs> Mom! This is a matter best left to the proper authorities, not you, not not a spinning bee. Imagine being tried by a gaggle of peasant women. That's unkind, Johan. It's the truth, isn't it? It doesn't matter if it hurts your feelings. She's right, Johan, you're being unfair. Remind me, Andreas, whose home are we in? Oh, lay off him. Oh, lay off him, Johan. Jesus. Andreas, if you're just going to stand around, how about I put you to work? If you're going to gossip with the girls, you might as well spin with them too. All right. Just happened to have a spare, a spare spinning wheel there. Right, I'll do this. How does this work? Draft wool from the distaff and... Uh, draft wool from the distaff and twist it tight. And spin the tight yarn onto the spindle. Once there's enough yarn on the spindle, collect it at the bottom and begin again. Draft, twist, spin, collect, repeat. You'll figure it out. So draft, twist, spin, collect. Okay, so draft. Damn thing. I'll oh, see, so spin it now, I'll sit right there. Shit. Like that, maybe? Collect. I've got it! Seems straightforward. You know, I saw Big George talking to that nun again. The young one. <laughs> Who can blame him? God damn it, Johan! <laughs> oh, nasty. He knows she's trouble. I told him to stay away. She's very pretty, isn't she? In a mean way? Pretty, perhaps, but none all the same. 
He knows better. When has that ever stopped Big George from doing anything? We have plenty of pretty girls here in town. My Veronica's not half bad. Mum! <laughs> Let's not give Andreas any ideas, eh? Got more spinning, so draft, 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 spin, 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 draft, 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 spin, 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 collect. Brigitte has been spending a lot of time at her mother's house lately. Okay, who's that? Don't recognise her. Agnes is glad to have her home. And, Lu and, Lu and Lucky, is that? Lucky's always treated her like a daughter. But I can't, I can tell they're, they're concerned. Are Brigitte and Martin having trouble, Veronica? That's one word for it. Brigitte does what she can, but nothing pleases Martin. He won't lift a finger for her or Wolf. Oh, see, so Martin's her, Martin's her, her, her husband, see. Yeah, no, Wolf is. He's such an asshole. Well, that's not his business, is it? Women's work and all that. You ever seen him do much from doing much men's work, Dad? No. Can't say I've ever seen him do much work at all. That's a problem. Perhaps Lucky can talk some sense into Martin. He's always been a devoted husband and father. Lucky Steinauer is the model of what a man should be. Okay, more. So draft, draft, draft. Spin, spin, spin. Draft, draft, draft. Spin, spin, spin. Collect. Oh, there's Otto. Is everyone behaving themselves in there? Oh, it's you. Afternoon, Otto. Come to see anyone special? Hello, Otto. It's good to see you. I heard laughing from the road and knew you all had to be up to no good in here. And look, there's Andreas. Have you been minding your manners? Old Johan here is a real stickler for propriety. propriety. I fear I've been yoked to the wheel of propriety my entire life. Right, what was I thinking? You're probably going to take everything you hear to the abbot. As if the abbot cares what the common people think. Hmm. The abbot's really not so bad. I think he is, actually. Easy for you to say, considering you're not subject to his whims. Listen, you're a fine enough man, Andreas, but you're hardly unbiased. Too much time listening to hymns, not enough time working. That's your problem. No wonder you're not married, Andreas. We all know you work hard in the fields, Johan. No need to boast. He works hard in other places, too. I don't like the sound of that, actually. Mum! Yeah. You've been in town a few months, Andreas. Got any burning questions you've been meaning to ask? Um, yeah, let's ask about the Abbey. About Kearsau Abbey. Clara mentioned the Abbot has suddenly started raising taxes. Raising them and changing their terms, yes. When Father Matthias was the abbot, he would let us pay a portion of our taxes in crops. Yeah, I remember that. Naturally, the ship for brains abbot put an end to that this year. Even if our crops fail or produce less than we'd like, we still owe the abbey for the use of the land. It doesn't make any sense. How can you raise our taxes when the price for our grain does not rise too? Where do you think the money comes from? He doesn't think about the common folk at all. It's not his abbey, it's not his problem. If it's not his abbey, it's not his problem. What about the miller? Doesn't he have some part to play in that? Benhard drives a hard bargain. He won't give us a better deal just because the abbot raises our taxes. Who's Linhart again? I don't think I've seen him before. What we need is access to more land. Trying to bargain with Lenhard won't get us that. Lenhard is not a Lenhard is not a kind man, and he does not negotiate. He might if you carry a lot of debt, but his bargains are cruel. We pay him even before the abbot, though, but I'm not sure why. Good. I have nothing Christian to say about Leonard Muller, so I will say nothing at all. Except that I hope he falls into a fast moving river during a flood and dashes his brains on the rocks. Lovely. Jesus Christ, Eddie. 
Can we talk about something else? Come on, Andrea, surely you've got better questions than that. Okay, ask about testing, so I get, I get to ask about both of them anyway, okay? Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, I forgot about her, the, the person they've kept in the, uh, in, the, um, in the church. Maybe ask about this one first. Do you see much of the monks and nuns in town? Why would we? They think they're best than us up on their fancy hill. They mostly keep to themselves, don't they? Observing the hours and all. I can hear them singing sometimes, when the weather is right. It's nice. There are a couple who do their shopping in town. A fat man, very cheerful, and a serious woman with a stern face. Yeah, Wojlov, that was his name. He was the person who spoke to me last night. Uh, let's see, you must mean Sister Matilda. She's a sweet woman. It's a shame what hap- Oh, never mind. What was that? Eva, shh! Oh, is, Matil is Matilda the one who was, um, who was uh, like, assaulted by the Baron or something? The fat man is kind. He always says good morning. I think I know what they're telling me, to be honest. Um, ah, that can only be Brother Wojlov. He's an alright sort. Caught a pilgrim troubling my Veronica once at once and set him right with a quickness. He's really strong and he has a very loud voice. A very loud laugh too. Hmm. I was aware you ladies paid such close attention. Jealous of a monk, Johan? Hardly. A man who's a man who's taken a vow of chastity is no threat to me. Certainly not. Good lord. I notice you don't say much about the sister. Sister Matilda. She's pleasant enough when she comes to town. She's more friendly with Gretchen and Ulrich than the rest of us. How is it you know everything about everyone, Eva? I pay attention. Smart. Huh. Are you bored, Andreas? I'm bored. No more talk of monks and nuns, please. Oh, so you are jealous. I don't know about you girls, I don't know about you girls, but I'm sick of this wall. I'm sure we've all got other chores to get to. Is that the end of it? I'm glad to have that over with. Now I don't have to think about wool for a whole year. Oh, I was having such a nice time. I certainly learned a lot. Care for an escort home either? Oh, he likes her, doesn't he? I'd like that, yes. <laughs> I don't like it when she laughs. I expect everyone will be on their best behaviour going home. They always are. Johan, please. Andreas, will I see you home for supper? Um, yeah, I'll say perhaps. I'm not sure what my plans are this evening. This was very illuminating. Thank you all for letting me join you. Thanks for coming by, Andreas. Come back any time. Unless you come on Abbey business. Don't threaten him with a good time, Johan. <laughs> yeah, so now it's time to eat and then I've got... And then I need to go and speak to the Archdeacon. I should find someone to eat with. Oh, a quick look at that then. In the journal. The spinning bee, yes. I attended the spinning bee at Johann Bauer's house. I gained some clarity on the various tensions in town, including that Martin Bauer is a known thief. Though the women agreed he likely doesn't have the temperament for murder. Right, okay. So, guessing they're saying it's not Martin. Okay, so, who to eat with today? Maybe I'll go to the Zimmermans. See Otto again. I think this is Zimmerman's place, isn't it? Yeah, Zimmerman House. That's old Otto, isn't he? Yep, thought so. Did you have dinner plans, Andreas? Want to join me and Dad at our table? I'd appreciate that, thank you. Let's get going then. Bless us, O Lord, and these your gifts, which we are about to receive from your bounty. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 How are you feeling today, Dad? Anne's been killing me. Back's been killing me. Goddamn knee's been killing me. Want some advice, boys? Don't get old. Just think about death. 
I hope you find some relief soon, old Otto. Only relief coming my way is death, I suspect. Farmer's fate ages, ages you beyond your years. Just look at my boy here. Works too hard, he does. What choice does he have? None, with the abbot breathing down my neck. I'll tell you he wants me to replace, replace the roof on his house next. Didn't you just replace the one in the scriptorium? Yeah, I made a mess of my shoulder doing it. The way that bastard Gurnot orders me around, you think I'm one of his little monks. Right, what have we got to eat here then? So we've got some poached egg, some salmon, or some rye bread. Okay, uh, nothing else to eat here, is there? No, so let's have the bread first. Works like a dog and says it's for the glory of the Lord. It's not right. It's not, I agree. Easy enough for you to say when it's my work, my work that keeps you warm when you're scribbling away in that scriptorium. Apologies, that was not Christian of me to put that on you. But neither am I wrong. That was bad, but the miller might be worse. That shithead Lenard's been screwing us for years with his toll. I've never spoken to him. Is he really so bad? He's worse even than you know. Or will he ever, or will he ever have to know being a visitor? Which you should thank the Lord. Imagine your only income for the year was in the wheat you could grow in the summer, and the miller determines how much it costs you to grind into flour. What if you have a poor season? What if the miller raises his toll? What if everyone has a great season and there's too much da goddamn flour to make any money with it? Yeah, that sounds awful, doesn't it? <laughs> the farmers are at the mercy of the weather, and the weather, the church, and the miller. Two of those are beyond their power to influence. But the miller is their neighbour. He sees them struggle. He should help them. But not Lenhard Muller. He only, he only takes more. I hadn't considered it like that. God willing, Lenhard will meet justice in this life or the next. Lord willing. On to more, on to more pleasant pastures, eh? You see any of those nuns while you're working, Otto? Dad. Let's have a poached egg. I remember that Cecilia woman being pleasant to look at back when I worked up there. Do you pay much attention to the nuns, old Otto? Oh, I pay attention to everything now that I can't work. Lots to see in the world. Lots to see in the world. Like... Nuns. Mother Cecilia would not appreciate being spoken about that way. I don't mean anything by it, just using the eyes the, the Lord gave me in the way he intended them to be used. Other pretty sisters up there as well. Sometimes they catch the wrong man's eye. Like yours, maybe? Shame what happened to that nun a while back. Glad she came back, though. Yeah, I know you mean. Do you mean Sister Matilda? I heard she had to leave. Okay, let's have the salmon. Afraid so. We don't know all the details, Abbey business and all, but the rumours were grim. Still a pretty woman still a pretty woman since she came back, but her kidney her kind eye her kind eyes turned some kind of, to some kind of sad. You've already heard all the town secrets since you've been to the been to the spinning bee. Right. Listening to those women gossip is enough to send any man running. Hey son, I need to lay down. Why don't you say goodbye to your friend here? Sorry, Andreas. The old man needs his rest. Rest well, old Otto. Hmm. <laughs> Don't know what you mean. Ain't any old men in this house. <laughs> what about you? Alright, I guess the time's come now. I'm not sure I'm fully prepared. I need to go to the chapter house to meet with the Archdeacon. There we go. Alright, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm quite nervous here because I really do feel like I'm gonna like mess up quite badly in one way or another. Okay, which way is the chapter house? Probably quicker to go by the side entrance, isn't it? Oh yeah, they all are. There's brother Guy, brother Adok. There's, there's uh, Marguerite and the other Gertrude. Oh, there's loads, lo quite loads of people here, actually. Let's see what they say. Let's talk to uh, talk to Eddie. Hey, Andreas. No, not really much. 
Does Adok have anything to say? God bless you, Andreas. Guy. Day, Andreas. God bless you, Andreas. Okay, so where's the chap's house? Okay, here we are. Time to meet with the Archdeacon then. Is that him there? Oh, it's his father Gernot. Andreas. Father Gernot? Master, Master Mailer, if you think I am unaware of your actions around this abbey in the past few days, you are mistaken. Oh? I know that you visited the widow Kemperian and convinced her to question the legal status of her lease. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's going to be happy with either of these. So what if I did? You're trying to trick her. I don't need to trick her. I am the abbot of Kearsau. I was elected to this holy position by my brothers. I was invested with the power to rule this land by the lance of the emperor, whose own right is derived from God himself. So forgive me if I do not respect the legal posturings of a failed university student. God, yeah, I can, I, yeah, no, that's uh, I always knew that uh, Father Gurnot was a piece of work. It doesn't matter if you respect me. What you're doing isn't legal. You don't decide that, and if you interfere again, you will pay for it. Now then, for all your meddling, you will not be welcoming Kierso after your commission is completed. What are you going to do? Have Matthew throw me out? We've removed more formidable curs than you. Your days of interfering in the daily life of this abbey will end. It was never my intent to interfere, Father Abbot. I'll leave you to the Archdeacon now. Try not to perjure yourself. God save you, Andreas Mailer. Yeah, I hope I never have to deal with you again. Okay, so there's the Arch is, yeah, this is the Archdeacon, is it? Please state your name for our records. Let's go with, um, let's see what. I wonder if this will have any impact later on down the line. Andre, let's do it. Let's just go with this. Andreas Mailer, journeyman artist from Nuremberg. What is an artist doing in Kearsau Abbey? The Abbey still has some commissions from wealthy patrons, and I need the money before I return to Nuremberg. Arnold, please write that down. I think we're ready to begin. Of course, your reverence. Now then, Master Mailer, what was your relation to Lorenz, the Baron Rothvogel? I only knew him for a day, but we were on friendly terms. Do you feel you had a sense of him as a person? Um. Uh, hmm. Yes, your reverence. How would you characterise him? Let's go with a fine man, a lover of art and knowledge. That was the opinion. That was the opinion of Father Gernot and the Lady Salo Salomia as well. Who's she again? Oh, I think I recognise her. She went. She went the library. Do you believe everyone regarded him with the same warmth? Yeah, because the thing is, if I say that, then that's yeah, you know, that's not really going to help my case with Piero, is it? No, Your Reverence. It's clear that some locals had little love for the Baron. As unfortunate as that is, such knowledge may be a boon to us at this moment. The Baron Rothvogel was murdered here, in this very room. Someone did it. Father Gernot believes it was one of his monks, Brother Piero. I have met with Brother Piero and questioned him at length. While it seems unlikely that a man of his age and temperament could murder the Baron, he was discovered in flagrante delicto. Rosser corpus delicti. Body of the crime. Sometimes literal, often figurative. The principle that must be proven to establish a crime occurred. Let's say technically he discovered the corpus delicti, but was not caught in, in flagrante delicto. Master Mailer, I am not interested in your clarifications, technical or otherwise, on matters of Latin or law. If you wish to advocate on behalf of Brother Piero, 
I suggest shutting your mouth until I ask you a question. Piero had reasons to resent the Baron. The loss of his work, the insistence on discussing the writings of the troublemaker from Wittenberg. And as for his age and infirmity, I myself have read on many cases in which a man of modest strength succumbs to the temptations of the devil. Once seized by a devilish fear, the poor sinner gains an infernal power that allows him to inflict grievous wounds, sometimes fatal. What I am saying is that in spite of the curious circumstances, Brother Piero is the most plausible perpetrator of this most vile act. I understand that you are on friendly terms with Brother Piero. You also interacted with the Baron both in the town and the Abbey. Did you witness anything that suggests someone else could have murdered Baron Rothvogel? Yeah, maybe, maybe we'll try Ferenc here. The Abbey's prior, Ferenc, was behaving suspiciously the day of the Baron's arrival. He may have had a motive for me. He may have had a motive. That is an extraordinary claim, Andreas. The Abbot speaks highly of the prior, and he oversees both your and Brother Piero's work, does he not? Yes, your reverence. An extraordinary claim requires extraordinary evidence for me to take it seriously. Why should I take the word of an artist over a respected officer of this abbey? I can provide evidence of Prior Ferenc's motive. Please do so. Oh, maybe I should reveal this about uh, the uh, the uh, the magical ritual. That that could uh, maybe that could end up uh, getting him into really hot water. And maybe you won't like about me uh, about the Baron being. In, you know, may, I'm not. Maybe you won't actually believe that, for example, because you know the Baron will be involved in um, in magical ritual. I'm, w I'm wondering, is he actually going to believe this? And like, you know, the ba Baron Rothfog would never do something like that. Let's go with this. Baron Rothfogel and Prior Ferenc were exchanging letters about performing a magical ritual during the Baron's visit. You have proof of this? I have an imprint of a letter that the Prior wrote to the Baron. In it, the Prior mentions that he will not perform a ritual for the Baron, even if the Baron does follow through on a threat to implicate him to Inquisitors in Innsbruck. An implication of necromancy is a serious matter. The prior's position would have been in peril, possibly even his life. And how do you believe Prior Ferenc would have killed the Baron? In a test of strength the Baron's knife, it seems unlikely that the Prior could have prevailed. Even if an outcome is improbable, it may still occur. A fair point, Master Mailer. Is there anything else to say about the Prior? On the day that the Baron arrived, I secretly observed Prior Ferenc in the scriptorium. Was this an intentionally covert observation? No, I was working alone and had dropped something on the floor. The Prior did not know I was there. Very well. Continue. He wrote a note, a cipher, in a book. When I deciphered the note with a volvel, it pointed me to a grave in the cemetery. This is already quite elaborate, Master Mailer. How does it connect the prize motive? I found, buried in the grave, a number of occult items. A knife, a plate, and a cup, all engraved with magical symbols. The earth had been freshly turned. The prior, the prior had buried them there the day of the Baron's arrival. Is there anything else to say about the prior? No, irreverence. Very well. Who else may have wanted to see the Baron dead? Oh, this is new. I could bring this up, perhaps. Maybe, uh, maybe you won't uh, won't care, but I'll go for it anyway. Your Reverence, I would like to bring up a concern I have about Ottilia Kemperin's lease with the Abbey. Is this relevant to the murder of the Baron? No, but as you represent the Prince Bishop and the Abbot rules these lands, I was hoping you might listen. Please be brief, Master Mailer. I have many more people to question. The abbot had Brother Guy write a letter to the widow about reclaiming her land. It's based on a false claim. False in what way? 
They claimed the lease was with the widow's late husband, Rani Kemper. It was not. The lease began generations earlier with Attilia's great-grandfather. What substantive bearing does this have on the abbot's claim? It, yeah, let's go with this one here. If the existing lease allows for the widow to partition her land to other renters, she could pay the fees on the land. Yes, if it does. Many peasants in freeholds resort to such measures in hard times. Very well, Master Mailer. I shall make my own inquiry after I have completed my work here. Now then, let us return to the matter at hand. Hmm, I could I could just say here I can think of no one else who could cause harm to the Baron, your reference. I mean, I don't think I don't have enough information on Lockie to be honest. I don't I really don't think um, Atelier Kemper could have done it, and I'm I'm not I'm guessing they're saying that Martin couldn't have done it either. Although maybe I could suggest that perhaps, but I mean he I mean he probably wouldn't have been able to like you know take his body to the uh, the chap the chap taps, could he? Uh, let's go with this one. I can think of no one else who could have caught who, ha who could have caused to harm the Baron, your reference. Very well. Are you aware of anything else that might shed some light on this case? Has Brother, Flo has Brother Florian told you about the note he found in the Baron's clothing? Yes, Brother Florian explained how he came to find it, and told me its contents. Master Adel Jaeger has entered his testimony in our register. I don't understand the implications. Who is the innocent? It's not clear to me either, Your Reverence. Do you believe the murderer wrote it? Whoever wrote it was a talented scribe. I understand Kiersau has two, the elderly brother Adok and the younger brother Guy. To be frank, your, rever your reverence, neither man has the skill to write in this way. There's something about it too. The style is just... different. It's unlike Adok or Guy's writing. Unlike mine. Something about the way the first and second strokes meet on the A and G. Yes, well, whatever the particulars, it seems it will remain a mystery that stands apart from the commission of the murder. Yeah, should I tell him about this other note, or...? Or what? Because, I mean, he'll it, start asking where I found it, won't he? Hmm. Maybe let's go with this. Unfortunately, there is more to tell. I found another note. A note had been written in the same hand, on the same type of parchment, to the Wizzo Kemperian. That is deeply troubling, but again beyond the bounds of my investigation. In any case, I thank you for bringing it to my attention. Of course, Your Reverence. Until next time. Until then. The final day of law and judgment. Oh god, here we go. Andreas! I didn't think you were coming to this. I didn't think I was either. I suppose I wanted to see how this ends after all. He was the prior of the Abbey, if you can believe it. Did you ever talk with him in the Abbey, Andreas? Oh, so they are, they are implying that Prior Ferenc did it, so my testimony you know, cost, uh, cast out on, um, on Prior Ferenc then, I suppose. You missed the trial, Andreas. The Archdeacon read all the charges and told him guilt and found him guilty. I worked with him almost every day, Clara. I didn't know he had murdered him. He had murder in him. Oh, they want you to think they're so pious, but all they're here to do is slowly drain the life out of this town. Calm down, Peter. Oh, here, here comes the procession. Here's Otto. Don't miss anything. No, you're fine. Andreas. Otto. Oh god, here we go. Agnes Diuki, yes sir. I didn't do this! God knows it, even if you do not. Agnes Diuki, Tos Protector Misera Nobis. That's a Latin, that. This can't be happening. This can't be happening. Agnes Deke, he told protect him on t Oh, oh, it really hits him there. Silence! Silence! 
I order the executioner to carry out his duty. I warrant him peace and safe conduct, whatever may befall him. I think I pro probably should watch this, because it is basically my testimony that has uh, done this to, hasn't it? Let's just watch. My god, my god! Hold still! No, no, no! Ooh! Ooh! Oh god, that's brutal. My lord judge, I've executed well. Executed judgment and law have required. For that I thank you I thank God and my master who has taught me such art. Wow, so Prior Ferenc is actually dead now, and it's all because of me. I know this was your doing, Andreas. Take it up with the Archdeacon, it has nothing to do with me. The Archdeacon wouldn't have reached his verdict without your testimony. I read it. I didn't say anything that wasn't true. You are no longer welcome at Kearsau, Andreas Mailer. I will send your final payment to the Gertners. May you have a long and successful career in Nuremberg, and may you never travel this way again. R3 separation. There's Piero. Andreas, has the time come for you to leave us? I'm afraid so, Brother Piero. This farewell will have to be brief. Father Gernoth made it clear I was no longer welcome at Kearsau. I pray the time will soften Father Abbot's heart. I hope he eventually realises you were only trying to help me. This is a sad parting, but inevitable. I had hoped you would stay a little longer. But the world needs you more than Kearsau does. You have grown beyond this old abbey and become a master in your own right. I will miss you, my son. As I will you. Come, your masterpiece is complete. May I see it one last time before you go? Please, I value your assessment. The opinion of one old monk matters little. All the same, I'm excited to see it finished at last. It is a masterpiece, truly worthy of the word. And it appears you took my advice to heart. What advice was that? That make it his own, essentially. Draw himself in there, yeah. To put yourself into the work. Not just to interpret another artist's work, but to transform it into something true. This shows the world as it is, and as you have seen it, even if it is, even if it is not what you may want to see. Though it is not my pl place to say so, I am proud of you, Andreas. Oh, what's that? What's this? A scrap of parchment? Uh-oh. Do not return here. A warning? It's the same writing that, uh, that uh, the Baron had. Whose hand is this? It doesn't look like Brother Adox or Brother Guy's. Brother Florian and I found a similar note in the Baron's clothing. Someone was trying to manipulate him into going to the chapter house in the middle of the night. It must have been written by someone who knew his secrets enough to provoke him. They tugged at those secrets to get him killed, like someone pulling at threads that had been buried in the past. Frightening thought, but who would do such a thing? I wish I knew. Do not trouble yourself overly about it. Your future lies outside of these walls. I hope that you will have time to visit me once or twice in your travels before the Lord takes me. I'll come as often as I can. Assuming Father Gernot doesn't forbid it. We must have faith that better days lie ahead for all of us. God bless you, Andreas Mailer. Thank you for your guidance. Until later.
Oh. Oh, Andreas. He's, he's aged a bit quite a bit, hasn't he? Are you alright, Master Andreas? What? Are you alright, Master Andreas? Yes, thank you. I was just remembering him. Oh, Piero. Trying to, anyway. It doesn't come easily anymore. Oh? Would you like me to leave you alone? No, no, Casper. It's not necessary. There's nothing to be done about it now. It's too late. Like so many things. Andreas Mailer. I never expect to see your face here again. Have you been in Nuremberg these last seven years? Oh, seven years have passed then, okay. No. Nuremberg for a few years, but I received some lucrative commissions abroad. Oh, more background, I see. So pick a background. So Poland... Uh, Andreas knows Polish, bits of Czech and Hungarian, and can reference cultural touchstones from Krakow, Prague, and Buda. England. Andreas knows some English and can reference cultural touchstones from London and other parts of Britain. France. Andreas knows French and can reference cultural touchstones from Paris, Tours, and Dijon. And Aragon. Andreas knows some Spanish and bits of Arabic and can reference cultural touchstones from Barcelona and Valencia. Let's go with England. I was in London mostly. I was well received there and painted portraits for the nobility and prominent merchants. Hey London? The capital of England and centre of new religious strife between its king, Henry VIII and the church. The city has struggled under religious and political extremism throughout its throughout his reign. Did you encounter any Jews among your clients? No, though there was rumour of a home for Jewish converts to Christianity in the city. Why? I had heard that a handful of physicians were naturalised as citizens after the expulsion. I wondered if they might have found a home in England after their recent ejections from Portugal and, Na and Navarre? I, I don't know where that is. I'm surprised you care at all. In spite of your extensive travels and success, you're still not welcome at Kearsau. The abbot hasn't forgotten what happened. Seven years isn't all that long. I simply wanted to pay my respects to an old friend. Surely you understand that. I understand why Father Abbot expelled you from the Abbey. What were you expecting? A hero's welcome? What's the land house? Land house. An inn or tavern usually owned and operated by a single family that serves travellers in rural areas. Fine. Tell Father Gernot I'll be staying at the land house in town for a night or two before moving on. The Golden Hand? I'll tell him. I can't imagine your care. Why is he so rude? God bless you. Now, be off. Part 4, Revolution. June 1525. Okay, so it's like the next part of the game then or something. That monk seemed unhappy to see you, Master Andreas. Why is the abbot so angry with you? Toward the end of my stay in Tassing, there was a murder at Kearsau Abbey, a nobleman. Father Gernot panicked and accused my friend, Brother Piero, of committing the crime. I helped convince the investigating archdeacon that another monk was responsible, Prior Ferenc. He was executed for the crime. You got someone killed? No, I collected evidence and presented it truthfully. The Archdeacon is the one who made the ruling. Well, you couldn't let your friend die. Why didn't you mention it before? Well, I suppose it must have been a hard situation about it if about if the abbot is still this mad at you. I had to make some difficult choices. Maybe they were the maybe they were the wrong ones. I've had to I've had to live with that. Why do we come here if you're not welcome? I wanted to pay my respects to Brother Piero. And to be honest, I'm not looking forward to returning to Nuremberg. This commission, 
It's an obscene vanity piece under the pretext of a, of a religious scene. My patrons just, just want to celebrate themselves and their wealth. I dread each new commission more than the last. Every step I take toward home is agonizing. But, Master, you're famous and rich. Your work is wonderful. When I saw your altarpiece in Nuremberg, I begged my father to help me become your apprentice. I don't understand how you could accomplish all that you have been you have and be unhappy. I know, it must be hard to believe. I once was I was once very much like you. Once, I wanted this life so much that it consumed my every waking thought. I don't know if I've changed, or if what I wanted was never really real. Maybe I've been a fool this whole time. I want life as an artist to be better for you, Casper. Learn from my mistakes, alright? Alright. Yes, Master Andreas. I shouldn't be burdening you with such dark thoughts, Casper. Come, let's visit my old friend Klaus. It's been too long. As you like, Master Andreas. Wow, so uh, now got a time skipper. Now Andreas has like uh, done all of his work, and seven years have passed, and he's now come back to uh, come back to Tassing. Right? Okay. Well, this is interesting. So I'm, I'm, I guess it I guess it's ambiguous then as to whether or not uh, like Prior Ferenc actually did the deed or not. Because I guess it could have worked like yeah, one way or another, and you could have implicated like whoever you wanted to based on the uh, the information that you'd been given. But yes, it, it definitely seems like there is like a mastermind working behind the scenes who like manipulated both the, the killer and the Baron to meet at the chapel, and then that got the killer to then murder the Baron after after they met up with each other. So maybe Prior Ferenc was innocent after all. Maybe an, I mean I did end up saving Brother Piero, but maybe I got another innocent man killed. But I mean Prior Ferenc probably deserved it with his occult, you know, his occult, uh, his occult works. But uh, maybe you know, it's, maybe this, the killer really is still out there. I need to find them at some at some point. Maybe that's what this next part's all about, finding the uh, finding the next killer. But uh, hopefully uh, that's something you'll all be looking forward to next time. And if you like this video, then please, please give it a like if you're not already subscribed. It really does help me out to get my channel known. If you want to see more content like this, like more of Pentiment, or if you have any suggestions for what other games should play in the future, then please leave a comment in the comment section below. And until next time, folks, bye.